also a traditional Jewish, Christian, and Muslim. Hi, Katie. Hi, Preston. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you and to everybody. Yeah. And Happy New Year to our special guest, Jack Hopewell. Thanks for joining us, Jack. (laughs) Happy to be here. So on this episode of the the Holy Holy Watermelon Watermelon Podcast, Podcast. it never really syncs up as well when we do it remotely. How did that sound to you, Jack? (laughs) Sounded great. Sounded great. All right. (laughs) Yeah, so we're joined by Jack Hopewell, which the musical theater nerd in me is way too excited for this. But Jack is playing Jesus Christ in the second national Broadway tour of the 50th anniversary of Jesus Christ Superstar. So I'm nerding out a little bit. I'm going to try and (laughs) keep it, keep it together, but. And you folks, uh, you folks saw me, uh, I think, was it Edmonton or? I saw you in Edmonton on opening night. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. I must admit, I'm not as big of a musical theater nerd as Katie is, but I do enjoy musicals. And when I went through the list of projects you've done, I was actually really quite surprised and pleased to see that you had played Snoopy a little while ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big, big fan of uh, your good man, Charlie Brown. Um, I did. Yeah. My, uh. My my two my two typecasts, uh, God and then off the walls like animal, <laughs> so s- Snoopy, uh, yeah, it works. Rock on! <laughs> Thanks, thank you, thank you. That's awesome. So, I mean, we start with all our podcasts and all our guests asking what your religious background is, what you were raised, what are you now, because that will influence some of the questions we ask today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was raised Roman Catholic. Uh, I was born, um, not all my family is Roman Catholic, but, uh, my, my mom's side is, um, I have fun little fact. Um, my, my grandfather was a Catholic priest. Um, at one point, my grandmother was a Catholic nun at one point. They left that service before meeting each other. I have to give that disclaimer. Um, but, um, they felt they were called to, um, raise a family. So my, my, and my grandfather disagreed with some policies of Rome at the time. Uh, and so he received his papal dispensation, had my, had my mother, uh, with my grandma and, uh, yeah. So I was raised Roman Catholic. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm, uh, super practicing Roman Catholic. I, I'd still consider myself a Catholic, but more of a like salad bar Catholic um, in which I <laughs> pick and choose some of my beliefs uh, and some of my attitudes. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's how I'd classify myself now as a, as a semi-practicing Catholic um, with some disagreements uh, towards the church in certain areas. So. Awesome. I like that metaphor of the salad bar. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I mean, I think most people are probably salad bar religious. Yeah. Right. Right. So generally speaking, belief is a, a tricky thing though. Sometimes we, we feel like we just can't believe a thing that's presented to us. And sometimes it's helpful to just hold on to, the bigger thing while letting go of that little thing that we don't agree with. I think that's a healthy choice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, As you mentioned, you've played Jesus more than once, not just uh, in this tour. Is there something, I mean, now you've told us you're Roman Catholic, is there something about Jesus or the story that draws you to these roles? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's in the simplest way, it's really, it's really magnanimous. It's a magnanimous character. It's, it's, Jesus, (laughs) Jesus, <laughs> you know, I mean, and a simple answer is, um, I just keep getting cast <laughs> as, as Jesus. Um, I, I was not, you know, surprisingly seeking this, this tour out. Um, I, it just kind of the, I ended up going to an audition and this, you know, kind of ended up happening for me. But, um, at the same time, uh, I, uh, 
I think really what draws me to, to playing Jesus is uh, fleshing out and discovering his humanity. Uh, because at the end of the day, even in, uh, you know, looking at the gospels and in the really biblical sense of Jesus, aside from being a God, he is human. Um, and I just think it's fascinating to be able to play somebody who's, you know, personhood and godhood are almost diametrically opposed in that way so it presents a challenge um and it's also really fulfilling at the same time so what would be your key to meeting both of those points together um i mean i find the more that i play the humanity um the the godhood in playing jesus the godhood kind of presents itself um uh, because I think the more, you know, the the more human Jesus seems, the more uh, the more magnanimous his actions seem to be. I guess if that makes sense. Um, while he's you know in pain on the cross, fearful for his life and dying, you kind of take take a step back and go, oh wow, he's sacrificing himself for us. Um, so yeah, I guess that's the that's the way that I would I'd try to make those two meet. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want... <laughs> are, are you gonna ask a question, Preston? <laughs> I forgot I thought I just did. <laughs> well, I guess so. Um, <laughs> how does your how does being Roman Catholic affect how you approach the last days of Jesus? Yeah. Um I mean, going back to, to the previous point, I, I think um, it motivates me to think about him and play him in more than just the strictly biblical sense. Um, because I was raised, I went to Catholic school for a bit. Um, and I think a lot of people just have this notion of who Jesus is um, and I feel while while they while people can feel really connected to the idea of the godly savior Jesus, I think there's still a disconnect from who he really truly was, which is a person, um, which is a human being as much as he was the son of God. So um yeah, I, I, I think um thinking about my 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 Catholic upbringing um just really makes me want to to play into his humanity and his fears his doubts um uh and you know it, it really uh it, it it helps me appreciate certain moments uh, a lot more i think like his uh like his crucifixion like his pleas in the garden of gethsemane i mean there's really really big moments in which he has his doubts which I think a lot of people gloss over. Uh, even even Catholics are really religious people. Um, and the the final text um, in in the show is is pretty accurate to the end of most of the Gospels. You know his seven phrases that he has while he's dying on the cross. Um, one of those being, um, you know, my my God, why have you forsaken me? Or it's sometimes another. It's why have you forgotten me? Why have you abandoned me? Um, it's like a rough transliteration from the uh, Aramaic. But uh, yeah, it's moments like that where I'm like, wow, I feel like these are really glossed over, even in Bible study. And um, I want to play into this. I want to play into his humanity and his flaws and his doubts. So. So has the musical influenced your relationship with your faith at all? Um, or maybe even any other times you've played Jesus. Let's open it up just a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess uh, it's, I think beforehand uh, the idea of Christ was a bit more intangible for me. I think, um, especially again going back to being in catholic school you're just given this like you're just looking at this statue of this figure on a cross this icon um and it's hard as much as you're told to appreciate um 
this sacrifice and this, uh, you know, his actions and all of that, it's hard to truly appreciate it when you feel so disconnected from this iconography, I guess. And uh, doing this show and connecting with that humanity has really, I think, helped me connect with you know, Jesus himself as a person, but also his message, uh, his message is throughout the gospel of compassion and forgiveness and love for one another at its base. Um, you know, all of his, all of his beatitudes, I think, uh, I've connected a lot more with that because I can relate to it a bit more. It's coming from an actual figure, an actual person, as opposed to this figure. So, yeah. You didn't use different words, but I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> this figure as opposed to this figure. Yeah, yeah right. For so, our listeners, yeah. he's making arm gestures because it's not a visual <laughs> medium. <laughs> Forgot about that. I know. We do that sometimes. Our descriptive video, right? Or yeah, descriptive right. audio. Right. Right. How, uh, how's the reception been to you playing Jesus from friends, family, grandparents? Yeah, I mean, it's... But... Right. Uh, from from, I mean, are you are you wondering from an audience, a general audience perspective as well? Yeah, or even yeah, all, yeah. All the I, I mean, with family, it's been pretty positive so far. A lot of them haven't seen it yet, and I'm a bit concerned for some of my more conservative <laughs> family members because uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a progressive take on on the gospel. Uh, but that being said, family wise, it's been it's been positive. Um, and audience wise, I'd say 95 to 99% of audiences have agreed with it. Um, it's always been a controversial musical, um, in part because, well, there's a lot of reasons, but, uh, one of those big reasons is there's no resurrection depicted at the end of the show. Um, and some Christians take great offense to that, um, because they feel that that is what this whole story is building up to, when really I think it's a story about humanity. It's a story about the relationship between Jesus and Judas and two men that are have everyone's best interests at heart, but are diametrically opposed um, in how they proceed with those goals. Um, and so there have been some upset people. Uh, the production does get some letters here and there um, about, you know, them being upset about the resurrection or about uh, the um, way in which I'm crucified sometimes or, you know, things of that nature. But I'd say for the most part, uh, people are really, really touched by this show. Um, they're really moved. Uh, people that, uh, people of the faith and people that are not religious, uh, they, I've seen lots of people from both sides of that coin move to tears at the end of the show. Um, it's, it's very emotional, regardless of, of your religious beliefs, watching a man be crucified and sacrifice himself is, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot to take in. And I think, especially for those that are Christian and have those beliefs, um, it's, it's really visceral for them. Uh, and they're, they're very emotional by the end of it. And lots of them are, you know, being, you know, at, at, the, at the stage door in tears, like, thank you. Thank you for this. So that's, it's really sweet. It's really, it's really nice to see. My mom didn't watch from 39 lashes onward. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I just was looked that... around and I was like, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Was it was that more of a like not wanting to see the 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 blood and everything else? Or? Yeah, we neither yeah. of us like gore. Um uh, I gotcha, gotcha. Like yeah. and then she told me that she gets <laughs> weird dreams when she's like about things in general. And she's like, Yeah, I wasn't gonna dream about that. I was like, That's yeah. fair. That's fair. I get it. Fair. I get it. I can appreciate the choice to not show the resurrection in addition to keeping it more of a, a story of a man instead of a story of a God that makes some sense. Right. 
but also Judas's experience, according to the Gospels, doesn't include any resurrection experience. Right. So it just, uh, if it's more of a Judas story than a Peter story, that seems like a natural choice. Oh, and it is. And I, I, I'd say to a lot of people, this story follows Judas even more as a, of a, as a protagonist than I think it follows Jesus. And I love that personally. Um, and I may get people that disagree with me on this, but I do think that um, the traditional telling of the Judas story is a little bit, uh, it's a little too black and white. I don't, I think people are more complex than that. And I think this show does a really beautiful job of portraying Judas as a man who has the right intentions, but makes some mistakes along the way. Um, and if you're going with the idea of predestination on certain things, I mean, there, there really wasn't a way for him to avoid doing what he was doing. He was destined and fated to do this. Um, and I think the the show asks that question, is that fair? Did he have yeah. the choice to do this? Or not? So it's one of the great questions. Yeah. There are some interpretations of the scripture that actually have uh, Judas kind of not loving the position he's put in as Jesus tells him, Hey, this is the role you're going to play. Right. Which is rough. <laughs> right. Well, and there's a the question also, um, I've got, I got into a heated discussion with somebody the other day about this, actually, uh, whether or not um, Judas knew what was going to happen to Jesus when he turned him in. Um, because at least in the show and my personal interpretation, I don't think that Judas thought that Jesus was going to be murdered, murdered. <laughs> I think, you know, talking to the to the priests and uh, everybody else, I think he was under the impression that Jesus was going to be turned in, removed from the public eye. Things were going to settle down a little bit. Um, and because uh, I think, at least in this show, Judas is very fearful of the mob rising up and becoming out of control and then his people being oppressed even further by the Romans as a result. Uh, and so I think he thought it was in everybody's best interest and also Jesus's best interest. He's worried about his health and safety to remove him from the public eye, remove him as this uh, icon. Um, and I think he thought getting Jesus arrested was the solution to that. But then it gets out of control. He's beaten within an inch of his life and then crucified. Um, and he, Judas, out of guilt, out of anger, out of rage, out of all sorts of emotions, eventually takes his own life. So. I mean, it's not a happy story. No, it's not by any stretch of the imagination. It's, it is not. But It's hard to imagine that with the relationship they must have had, that Judas would have knowingly sent Jesus to his death. Right. That's what I, that's, that's what I, that's what I, uh, what I feel and what I believe. And I've had some people, uh, because I think it's a somewhat traditional Christian, you know, education to be told, no, J Judas knew what he was doing and he did this out of greed. Um, and then he took his own life because he felt guilt. He just felt guilt for what he did. And he realized what he did. Um, but Judas is this evil character and there's not really any redeeming qualities given about him. Um, right. And I don't even think that's how Jesus would have wanted Judas to be remembered or recognized. So. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the whole thing about Jesus that we get from the gospels is that he's a loving, forgiving right. fellow. Right. That a moment of weakness like this is something relatively easy to forgive when you have a right. greater perspective. Exactly. Um, while we're on the topic of the, the ending, um, other actors have spoken about how difficult it can be to get into a character. So I've you know, read articles about playing Evan Hansen is very difficult. Right. Uh, is it difficult physically, mentally to be crucified eight times a week or get lashed eight times 39? times a week. 1,000%. 1, 1, <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, it's no easy task. Um, I think, I mean, there's a lot of preparation for me that goes into it. And 
doing all the things you should do, hydrating, eating properly, and doing my little warm up before the show um, in order to prepare my body and mind for the thing. Um, but I think the most important for me is finding moments of levity and happiness throughout the show. Um, you talk to other people backstage and I'm usually doing my best to, uh, you know, even as I'm being covered in blood and, and dirt and sweat and boot prints um, <laughs> backstage before I come on for the lashes, um, I'm, I'm dancing. I'm, I'm doing little dances with people, getting, getting prepped up. And then at the very last moment, I compose myself. I take my like uh, check off breath. My get into my you know hunched over, beaten, wounded position, and that is what I. That is all I need to be able to get into that mind space. Um, and then I go on with the lashes and the crucifixion. And it's really physically and mentally taxing. But I've had those moments of happiness beforehand that I can hold on to and then immediately come back after, but come back to afterwards. So. Awesome. And any like post-show ritual besides a shower? Uh, yeah. I mean, the shower is honestly a big part of it because I, I get that shower so hot that it like hurts. It is like steaming and uh, that just decompresses me so much. Um, but then afterwards I, out with the rest of the cast i don't speak much and i don't drink or any of that but um you know for out i might be dancing in a corner doing a little doing a little jig silently uh <laughs> and if not that i i usually decompress with um some tea and a show uh so yeah just kind of wind down for the night yeah it must be super tiring to live it's exhausting it's exhausting yeah um yeah and the travel is hard on top of it you know being in a different place all the time um but but it's also fun and i can do it while i'm young so <laughs> i mean yeah, yeah now's the time to do it right exactly <laughs> how much do those lashes suck he doesn't it's just glitter yeah so i mean it's still I mean, it's still it's glitter it's yeah right have you gotten so. glitter in your eye Oh, oh, I'm so much. I'm deeply concerned. I was like, yeah, that's... yeah, um, all the time in my mouth. Sometimes, um, you know, <laughs> doing studies on like microplastics and blood. Like I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be like a shining <laughs> example in in 20 years or so. But um, I, yeah, I, I mean, it gets all over me, um, and. I'm very safe the whole time. I never feel like I'm in danger or really in pain. Um, but it is it is an interesting position for me to be in to like have my arms over my over my head and you know held onto by a cable and be lashed and then have to physically react as though I'm being hit with a with an actual whip. Um, so it's uncomfortable for sure. Um, and I feel such a relief when i'm finally able to like fall and collapse to the ground so that's uh, real that's not acting at that oh point. that's oh that's 100 percent real that's 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 hardly that's hardly acting at all and when i'm crawling across the stage it's because i am i'm beat i am beat but yeah it's work to pretend that you're taking an injury oh yeah well because the whole the whole time and this is you know something i i learned people that are in pain your muscles are contracting, your muscles are contracting that whole time. And for me, a lot of that presents itself in me like doing a crunch essentially that entire time. And so I'm just doing a whole ab workout while I'm being, you know, thrown around and I can, I can barely breathe by the end of it. So, yeah. I think so you people... don't even need to hit the gym. <laughs> no, exactly. Exactly. I think people I forget how physical acting is. Especially when you're like there and you're like, this is amazing. And you just kind of get engrossed for 90 right. minutes. And right. then you're like, oh, wait, someone just did that. That's why I like theater right. so much. It's like, he just did that for me. It's great. Right. right. Well, yeah. Thank you for saying that. Because it is, it is, it's interesting. This role's really interesting to me because um, I was joking with somebody like it's a, it's a rock show 
and like a rock concert until it's not. <laughs> As I describe it, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's until it's really not. And for me, that presents itself in um, very much like a vocal and and acting show into a very physical show at the end of it. So, yeah, it's a fun okay. challenge. I was sitting with some ladies and they had no idea. They were like, we just like bought tickets to this. And I was like, hold on to your butts because you are in for a ride. I was like, yeah. yeah, the people that don't do that don't know anything about the show, don't do research about the show beforehand. Just, it's, that's wild to me. Um, and that's those are some of the people that do get upset, I think, um, because they have an idea of what the show is going to be about because of its name. And then uh, they that doesn't live up to their expectations, so they're a little bit disappointed by that. But um, yeah, that's it's always it, for the most part though. It is really exciting when the when those people have no idea what's going to happen and they don't know anything about the show, and then they see it, they're like, "Whoa, that's yeah. so cool!" Yeah. yeah. So good. Um, so back to the the physical stuff. Do you have any battle stories? Any injury oh. wounds? Come on. Um, I mean, I uh, I do have a couple uh, wounds here and there. I sometimes when I'm you know taking my post show shower, um, I'll go to like wipe off a bruise, and I'm like, oh, that's real. <laughs> that's okay. no, that's not makeup. That's or that's real blood. That's fun. Uh, oh. Don't know how I got that. Um, that doesn't happen all that much. More the bruising than anything else. I uh, guess it's a you know it's a very physical show, but. Uh, I, uh, there was one time that, uh, our, an understudy went on for, uh, our mob leader. Uh, so, uh, our original mob leader, I, I'm not sure who you saw, um, the night you were there, but is is Caroline Perry. Phenomenal. Um, and, uh, what? Phenomenal. Best dancer oh, oh, I've ever fantastic. seen. Fantastic. Incredible. Um, okay. and her, the mob leader understudy, Haley Heelsman, also an incredible incredible dancer um and she she does such justice to the role but um it was one of the first times she was on and she's the one lashing me the 39 lashes it's very um it, it i just love the idea that you know the mob leader the leader of the mob is is the one lashing me it's so essentially all of these people are inflicting this this pain upon me but sh she's doing this for the first time and throwing so much glitter <laughs> so, so, she she because it takes practice to know how much glitter you're supposed to throw onto me um and so she's just throwing massive handfuls on me and it's getting everywhere it's getting all over me it's getting all over the stage um and that glitter when mixed with like random precipitation from like the haze and then my blood that I'm just like trailing everywhere and everything else on that stage. It is a slippery, slippery mess. So the, the poor ensemble is trying to do like dance this crazy, this crazy number and they're like just kind of flipping and sliding everywhere. Um, I'm trying to crawl uh across the stage and then i'm like whoa <laughs> you know doing that whole thing we're doing the fight where i'm being thrown around and i'm genuinely just like spider-man slipping and sliding all over the place so yeah that was that was a fun time spider-man musical there's some real danger yeah right oh true talk about talk about cursed shows turn off the dark uh yeah <laughs> a little <laughs> different but Little very little real little danger for Jesus too. Right, right. <laughs> no, I've never. A... I think... Oh, go ahead. Oh, Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was just say I've. I have. I. I have to say I have never once felt unsafe in this show, and our 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 stage management team and all of our technical team do a fantastic job of making sure all of us are like never in any danger. So never had truly any like Spider Man turn off the dark moments, but uh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> Do you have a favorite song? Not necessarily one that you sing, or maybe it is one that you sing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hard for me to pick. I'd, I'd say if I can give you two answers in terms of uh, ones I sing. Um, 
there's a bit of a love-hate relationship with it, but I love Gethsemane um, because it's, uh, thank you. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I, so much of the show for me is, is being the, the bigger person and the, um, not revealing this grander plan that God and, and myself have for humanity. And um, some of that frustration, you know, comes out during the Last Supper and my argument with Judas. Um, but finally, Gethsemane is that moment where I'm able to really question God. Why are you making me do this? There's most certainly another way for us to accomplish this. And you're giving me absolutely nothing. Um, and so... Vocally, it's 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 beast, but it's fun to sing, um, and it is an emotional roller coaster, acting wise. And go like I've said a million times, um, it really showcases Jesus's humanity um, in his doubt of God and himself and this grand plan. Um, and then second answer songs i don't sing superstar i love superstar uh it's uh i'm being thrown around the whole time uh but lv ellis who plays judas is incredible he's just got one of the best voices i have ever heard um and he's singing the crap out of that song and the whole ensemble is dancing for their lives um and it really feels like the number that this whole show has been building towards. And for me, it's terrifying because this mob that was, you know, half an hour ago singing my praises is now hell bent on destroying me. Um, and the choreography and the way it's staged really shows that. Um, and it, it, it's, it's really a song. I feel like in part about the birth of, of zealotry and fanatical faith around Jesus um, as they're putting me up on the cross. Um, so yeah, I love it. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, speaking, of, speaking of Gethsemane, I was, uh, my parents went on the Saturday, which is also really cool because my parents are 70. So my parents saw it 50 years ago. My oh, mom, that's awesome. My mom saw the first international tour um, oh. in Denmark. That's awesome. Of all places. So yeah, they went on the Saturday and then I had dinner with my parents and my dad had been like singing it all week. And my mom was like, you got to stop. And I was like, no, we're going to listen to the soundtrack instead. Um, and we listened to the 1996 uh, West End version. And my dad was like, oh, Steve, ooh. With Steve Balsamo, right? Yep. Uh, but my dad was like, ooh, they were better on the weekend. And I was so, oh, oh. <laughs> I'll pass that, that on. My, that's one of my that's one of my favorite versions too. So that's that's high praise. That's yeah. that's super sweet. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's as much of a theater critic as I can be, but uh, oh. you know, pass that along. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, we talked a little bit about you know you getting some con complaints, concerns about there being no resurrection. We know when it came out in the seventies, it was super controversial i think a lot of that was partially how they portrayed judas um yeah what do you think jesus christ superstar means to audiences today 50 years later i mean i think um at least for christians i think people are a lot more willing today to accept a more nuanced interpretation of the gospel than they were 50 years ago um I think people are less beholden to strict doctrine and like wrote biblical beliefs than they were half a century ago. Um, so I think, I think a modern version of the show um, is, it, it really speaks to people. I think people really resonate, not just with the style that the show is put on, you know, reimagined for our modern era. Um, because as a side tangent, I think some people get a little um, disconnected from the, some of the productions where it's, you know, set in Nazareth and it's like period clothing and things like that. Um, so I think people are able to connect 
with the modern staging and telling of it. Uh, but um, also, um, I think it's I think it's moving for people, and people connect with it because it's nuanced. And um, uh, like I said before, people are less beholden to strict doctrine. So, yeah. Uh, so the the one that I've seen most recently had Tim Minchin playing Judas, who he's yep. pretty famously atheist. Yeah, the, the stadium tour, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And is there? a nice variety of believers and non-believers in the current cast? Most definitely, yeah. Um, there's there's a fair number of Christians um, in the show. There's a number of Buddhists in the show, um, atheists, agnostics, um, all over the place. Um, so there's a wide, I'd say a wide range of uh, beliefs in, in the cast. Cool. Does that come into play in the way you interact with each other at all? Yeah, um, I I think, so at the top of the show, some of us will have, um, you can frame it, we, we have an open invitation, you can frame it as a prayer or just like a, a breathing circle to get ready for the show, be together um, and have this almost spiritual connection with each other before we go on this 90 minute marathon. Um, and uh, I... I think regardless of your of the person's belief systems, um, they can connect with this human story that's taking place. Um, they can they can connect with the community that's forming on the stage, whether that's around this man, Jesus Christ, and supporting him or suddenly not supporting him. <laughs> so I think regardless, um, the show has been really, really great um, in helping us uh, form a really diverse community among the cast. Sure. So, yeah. um, sort of to that point, and this is something I really wondered about a lot, is that the arts have always been a really inclusive space. Uh, so how do how is it playing in a musical in a religion that's been exclusionary historically? Yeah. Um, well, I think uh, going back to the idea of doctrine, um, I think Christianity at its core is not an exclusionary, uh, an exclusionary religion. I think what's been exclusionary has been organized religion. Um, it's, it's always been the case that you know, what you take these people will take the fate in its purest form, and then create like an aristocracy around it, and then push people out, control people with it, um, and when and that just completely forgets uh, uh, Jesus's original teachings, uh, and I think that's part of the why, part of the reason I've been somewhat disillusioned from organized religion, um, and more so just lean back on what I believe Christian faith is. Um, so I guess to your, to your question about, you know, in, inclusivity in art and then uh, inclusivity in religion, I think because this is more of a non-denominational show in terms of its telling of the gospels, I think it works really well in terms of inclusivity um, because it's, it's teaching those original, uh, those original gospel teachings, uh, and it's uh, incorporating some really high art at the same time. So, yeah, I've a lot of people really like making rules for other people, yeah. and I think the closest that uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber gets in this, apart from showing the Pharisees being just awful occasionally, is writing a script which you kind of need for a play anyway. But in doing so, he remembers that Jesus wants people to love each other. That's the number one right. rule. Right. Easy enough That's... to get on board with. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I think people forget. I don't think I know people forget that when Jesus preaches love for your neighbor, that means 
everyone that not like you're as soon as you start saying or using religion to exclude uh, a, a set of people um, because you don't think that they agree with your uh, you know way of living or the your fundamental beliefs then you've you've you lost it, it. <laughs> yeah yeah you've right. lost the faith so I saw a great post on Instagram, on our Holy Watermelon Instagram, and said, Jesus said, love your neighbor, not love your religion. Ding, ding, yep. ding. Yep. <laughs> What's next, Preston? I had a follow-up question oh. a couple minutes ago that oh, I've already sorry. lost. <laughs> 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 Happens sometimes. <laughs> No, I don't think it's going to okay. come back to me either. <laughs> well, then I'll just move on down the list. Um, I mean, art and theater are always pushing boundaries, and Jesus Christ Superstar has always been a modern interpretation, even For sure. 50 years ago. Um, do you think this like super modern version is helping introduce it to new audiences? Um, and does it allow you to push boundaries even further? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I spoke about that a little bit previously. I think people are able to connect with um, the non-period uh, version of the show a little bit better. Um, because I think, at least for me, sometimes, or for audiences, sometimes it's hard to make connections to modern life uh, with something that is rigidly set in a in a pure time period that's so far back it's easier to kind of make parallels and connections with something that feels more modern um and so this this ancient story that is still very applicable today is now reskinned a bit and people can connect with it a little bit more uh and it does allow us to push boundaries a little bit i mean uh there there's I don't want to say pop culture references almost in it, but um, I think, uh, you know, in certain numbers, there's, uh, I, I think of Herod's number, for example, which is, is done in drag. Um, and that's not, I don't think something that you'd be able to do 50 years ago, let alone with a, with a classical uh, telling or interpretation of Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, and so I really, I really appreciate how the show is able to uh, do things like that and push boundaries in that way, um, have all sorts of different characters. So, yeah. So we're all young enough that we can hope to be around for the 100th anniversary tour. Do you think that some of the language might end up being adjusted? 50 Interesting. Years now? I mean, it's it's very possible. The language is the language and the lyrics have adapted since um, fifty years ago. Not by a lot, because I got to be honest. What Tim Rice wrote for this show is incredible. It's, it's so good. It's some of the best. Him and Andrew Lloyd Webber produced some of the best source material anybody could ask for. Um, but it's adapted a little bit. Make it mesh a little bit more um, lyrically and uh, and and for, for performance. Um, so I think there might be minor adjustments a little bit, but I don't think at the end of the day it's going to be anything too wild. It's just going to be similar to 50 years ago a word change here and there, you know, for, for example, um, 50 years ago in Gethsemane, the line was, uh, God, thy will is hard, but you hold every card. And now it's God, thy will be done. Take your only son, which I think is an improvement. <laughs> um, so I think, I think it'll be, I think the language won't stray that much from its original message, but I think there'll be, um, there'll be lyrical changes here and there. So they... you don't think they'll ever get rid of the these and thys? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. Um, although, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think because that's it. W f I've never really thought about that until you brought that up. That's that's. I think the, the only old. time that a thy or a thou is 
um, ever used in the show because a lot of the a lot of the language is so uh, is so contemporary. So, um, but I think that's really cool that that moment has that ain't that more archaic biblical language because um, in that moment Jesus is assuming his role. Um, and you see this in the production. He, um, I go from having a man bun and this like very you know, his bomber jacket and um, high top sneakers to a robe and sandals. My hair is a little bit more down to eventually my hair is down and I have fully assumed this Jesus role. Um, and I think that that is, I think that that thy is, is probably important in assuming that. So. I think it fits with the image pretty well. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. Uh, I also noticed that Judas doesn't call Mary a concubine anymore. <laughs> Love that's that. Like yeah. I, I yeah. And I was like, excuse me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because originally the, um, I, you're probably thinking of the 96 that's version. Uh, the, yeah. Right. It's a great version. Uh, the, originally the line was, uh, uh, that a man like you could waste his time on women of her kind. 96, they changed it to, uh, that a man like you could waste his time on such a concubine. Now it is, back. uh, now it's back to women of her kind. And I feel like that's, for me at least, like concubine is definitely biting, but it's oh, women of her kind. So, oh, like, <laughs> that's such a biting phrase. Um, another change that I am so happy for. Um, uh, it, Caiaphas has a line uh, during this, Jesus must die. Um, one thing I'll say for him, Jesus is cool. Uh, which is us. Uh, I just, I, it's so, it's so corny in the best way. Like it just fits the, the, the tone of that song so well. And they changed it. I think in the 96 version, it's infantile servants, the multitude grows or something along those lines. Um, but, uh, or the multitude drools, something along, something along those lines, but it's back to one thing I'll say for him. Jesus is cool, which I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy for. Yeah, that, I mean that is pretty yeah. modern language. Oh yeah, it's so good, it's so good. Um, are you still okay for time? Yeah, awesome. You no, know, you got a show tonight, so want to be. Yeah, no, I got a couple. I got a couple hours before the show, so Sweet. we're good. Um, yeah. anything else religious we want to ask before we get into the Broadway nerdy stuff? Preston? I can't think of anything right now. If it comes to me, it comes to me. <laughs> okay. I mean, we know how this goes. Um, in one of our very first episodes, we talked about pop culture as religion, um, or it's called a para-religion, where people get so into their thing that it could be considered worship. What are you super, super nerdy about? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I am very much a sci-fi nerd. Also a fantasy nerd, um, but I really nerd about nerd out about sci-fi, particularly uh, the Dune series. Uh, that's always been a big. Frank, Frank Herbert's Dune has always been very big. Um, ever since I was young, my parents introduced me to that, and um, I, yeah, I just I just really have loved the Dune books. I loved the movie that came out. I thought it was I thought it was a really good. Um, interpretation of the books um but yeah i just think it's it's held up so well and in, uh, in terms of discussions about religion um ecology about colonialism um and all sorts of other themes i think it's just a really really solid series awesome thank you yeah my husband and good like reasons it. to like it yeah <laughs> thank you thank you yeah i even one of my tattoos uh is is of the the desert mouse from that series oh, that's um amazing. cool yeah thank you. thank you thank you yeah it's it's <laughs> it's it's solid and i think it i think it's i think it's a book that most people should should read i think it's more uh topical today than it was back in the 50s when it came out so yeah i'd agree yeah and the, yeah the movie was good i'm excited for the second half of that yeah yeah yeah, yeah um, i really enjoyed it i think they picked a weird place to break it relative to the way they've broken it before but it's still good yeah I, um, I, yeah, right where it, where it ends right after the 
sorry spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen it but it came out months ago it's it's <laughs> it, where, yeah where it ended right after the duel with Janice um I was I was like little little bit of uh whiplash there but yeah. um yeah yeah I'm excited for the next one it'll be it'll be good yeah um some of our listeners and I also want to know what a uh, what your day in the life of a Broadway superstar is like nice uh yeah um it's not always super exciting. Um, I have to say, at least for myself, I've been working on it. My sleep schedule is terrible. Um, so I, it's been a lot of getting up at like 11 um, and uh, eventually getting out of bed by like 11.30 maybe. Getting a brunch by that point. Um, and then uh, a lot of the time especially when we're in a new city, um, our, our castmates and our crew will, will go out and explore things, um, whether that's a restaurant or we go to a museum or a zoo or go on a hike or something like that. Uh, we try to do that a lot of the time. Um, and then it's, I should preface this with saying I'm usually warming up throughout the day um, for this show vocally. Um, but then about, two hours before the show i'm doing a more intensive warm-up and um usually uh steaming my voice with a with a personal steamer um and then uh by 45 minutes before the show i'm uh i've i'm at the theater i do a fight call um for that uh massive fight at the end. I'll do a lift call sometimes if we're in a new city where um, the ensemble practice is lifting me in the new space. And uh, then half hour to show, I get my costume, get my makeup put on, somebody comes, does my hair in that super tight man bun. And uh, then by uh, 15 before show, I'm usually ready to go, get myself psyched up, might have a little bit of uh, an energy drink right, <laughs> right before going on. And then um, that's done. Uh, we'll come back from the hotel and then, or from the show to the hotel. Um, uh, sometimes I'll get dressed up to go out, but usually I'm just like staying in sweats or something like that. And maybe going out, get something to eat or um, sitting in with friends, watching a movie. And uh, then eventually falling asleep the wee smalls of the morning. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm Sounds sorry. Like a pretty good time. Yeah, so it's I'm pretty good. That- I'm sorry the weather was so shitty here because Edmonton's actually it's, really cool. City. Hey, it's it's okay. I had a blast exploring it, and I love the snow. I won't lie; it was freezing, <laughs> but, very cold. Um, but I had a blast like walking around in the snow and finding things. Um, I had some great food. I had some great food. Um, and uh, I went to the we went to the West Edmonton Mall. That was wild. Uh, that's biggest mall i have ever been to um put like every american mall to shame (laughs) it used to be the biggest mall in the world and then china built like four that were gotcha gotcha yeah i believe it i was like there is a whole water park in here there is a there's but it's it's a really well designed mall too because it i was like oh i feel like i'm gonna get overwhelmed very easily because i do get overwhelmed in malls and i wasn't overwhelmed and it felt very manageable and walkable for as big of a mall as it was. So that was cool. <laughs> well, that's good. Cause uh, yeah, it was balls cold when you were here and it's balls cold now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah I, I mean, just, I still had the, I sold the weather um, widget for Edmonton brought up and I saw negative, negative 11 this morning and I was like, woo. Okay. That's Fahrenheit. It's <laughs> yeah. That's Fahrenheit. Sorry. Yeah. 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 So it's minus 25 today. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cold one. It's cold. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I can't imagine living on that sleep schedule because I'm a morning person. Even like going to the show and it ending at what time did it start? It started at eight, ending at nine thirty. I was like, oh, yeah. this is past my bedtime. Yeah, time. right. Yeah, <laughs> you no. Know, for for a lot of us, like the night's young after that show. So sometimes yeah. I will just like go and pass out if it's like been a really long week. But usually on like two show days, I'm like, okay, I'm not. I'm not not going out after this but yeah 
yeah, fair. But it's too late for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm more of a night owl. The schedule works for me. Preston would be okay with it. Nice. I would nice. be okay with it. <laughs> so is there any part of the show that you find to be uh, a real challenge to do consistently night after night? Yeah. Um, I mean, crucifixion, it's really hard um, emotionally. And I have to, I have to be careful not to get myself into a place where I, you know, am really methoding it um, and believing that I am actually, you know, dying uh, because that's not a safe place to live in. Um, But even, you know, using different, training methods and I, I mentioned uh Chekhov breathing before um I, I I'm a big fan of Michael Chekhov and his psychological gestures um in terms of acting technique um and uh using that kind of breathing and physicality helps me to feel those emotions uh but not sink too deep into them that I like can't get back out of it when I need to. Um, So that's helped a lot, but it's still really difficult um, because it's to, to breathe like that and to contort my body like that and to scream in agony like that. While I found a way to be sustainable with it, 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 it takes a lot out of me and it's hard and it's, it's agonizing uh, sometimes emotionally to be crying out for my mother and to be asking why I've been, forsaken and all of that but um so i'd say that's probably one of the more difficult things to do night after night but um thankfully i'm navigating it in a way that i think is keeping me safe emotionally (laughs) so that's important thank you yeah i think so too um could you explain the chekhov breathing techniques for people who don't know because i don't yeah yeah so um michael chekhov is um a is uh, an acting uh, teacher and has the Chekhov philosophy from uh, a law from that I think he's one of the original um, Stanislavski students. Um, so a lot of it is rooted in Stanislavski and um, using your own experiences to inform your uh, your acting. Um, but for Chekhov specifically, um, and this is different. Michael Chekhov, I should say, is different from Anton Chekhov and the, you know, all of it, all that, that playwright. But um, it, a lot of it has to do with physicality and the way you breathe. Um, and it's the idea that if you assume the physicality or the breath of the character that you are portraying, um, that will help inform your emotions and um, your not only your physical response, but your emotional response to it. So um, there's psychological gestures that Chekhov uh, talks about in his book uh, and those uh, those can help portray different um, different actions and ways you're trying to communicate with people or how you're currently feeling so there's things like um, what I do before I go on for the temple scene I smash um, and I do a large motion in which I am moving down with a lot of force and having a quick breath um as opposed to before i'm on for the uh for the um uh the lashes and the trial i am in my i'm in my cuffs and i do a ringing uh, what, what Chekhov would call a ring uh where i take the breath into myself and i contract a little bit and everything gets very tight and inward and I can barely breathe, but I've taken the breath into myself and it's at that moment that I'm ready to go on and experience pain for the next <laughs> 15 minutes. So, yeah. Cool. That's awesome. To learn. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But I did, um, yeah, no, people don't usually ask about that. So it's, it's fun to talk about. Yeah. I, uh, like I said, I'm an, I watch it, but I don't have any talent. So. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. I'm I'm positive that's not true. <laughs> well, I just listened to our upcoming episode to proof it, and I do rap a couple lines of Hamilton. Oh, incredible! <laughs> Excited not, to listen. But... <laughs> uh, yeah, Preston tolerates me, so 
mm-hmm. we won't subject you to any voice tryouts today. Yeah, Preston was like, <laughs> don't sing. He might sign off the call. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> Is there a question that you wish people would ask in interviews that never gets asked? Um, I mean, honestly, I was going to... I... I, I usually my my response to that would be um in, in terms of this show like what are your thoughts on judas but you guys asked you asked me you know, the, like judas came up um we talked about it uh so um try to think other than uh other than judas um hmm. <laughs> so nothing on the top of your head yeah nothing off the top of my head but i'm gonna say i'm gonna say for the most part um what people usually never ask about is is my relationship with judas and whether or not i i think that uh judas knew what he was doing or whether or not honestly uh people never ask whether i think judas is the bad guy and I don't think he is. I don't think he's a bad guy at all. And uh, I think he's a human being. I don't think he's perfect. I think he's flawed, just like Jesus is. But uh, yeah, I think he's a man who thought he was doing right and wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Judas is just as big a part of Jesus Christ Superstar as Jesus Christ. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So I agree. I think it's important to uh, have this interpretation of them. Sure. Anything else, Preston? I got nothing else on my mind at the moment. Is there yeah. anything else in your mind, Jack, that you want to bring forward before we finish this? Um. Off? No. Other than if you want to, uh, if you want to check out our show. Uh, you can follow us on any of our socials at uh, usually the tag is Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, it might be like JCS Musical on Twitter, but for most uh, for most platforms, it's Jesus Christ Superstar. Our website uh, for the tour is uh, so my roommate is back there, <laughs> Darren. Um, you can you can go to us tour dot Jesus Christ Superstar dot com. Uh, there you can find a lot of our bios and get tickets for the show, see where we're going next, uh, find photos, things like that. And for me personally, um, you can find me on most platforms, usually at Jack Hopewell or jackhopewell.com. So. Awesome. awesome. We'll be sure to include all of those in our show notes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for yeah. taking the time out of your busy tour schedule to. Of course. Thank you for having me. Awesome. It was a pleasure to have you join us. <laughs> Um, and then for the Holy Watermelon Preston. We've got our merch shop, uh, our spread shop. We've got Discord for great religious discussions, some great memes. We're a pretty safe space for religious humor. Uh, <laughs> we've got Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and, of course, Patreon for those of us who want to support us and get a little extra content out of us. Absolutely. And uh, with that, peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. By the late Middle Ages, the Christian prophecy had fulfilled.